Ever since Kubernetes emerged, the interest in application platforms increased, both among users and vendors. Users realized that Kubernetes is far from being easy. It's certainly powerful, but it's not easy. Vendors, on the other hand, realized that Kubernetes adoption combined with its extensibility allows them to create application platforms that aim at simplifying the experience. They realized that layers on top of Kubernetes are good for business. As a result, we got all sorts of solutions with new popping like mushrooms after rain. Now, to be honest, most of the solutions are just wrappers that are completely missing the point and misunderstanding how Kubernetes works. Still, we need layers that will abstract away the complexity of Kubernetes so we keep getting new solutions and more often than not, we keep getting disappointed. Now, in the spirit of the quest to find a good application platform and not being afraid of getting disappointed, once again, I embarked on a journey to explore Acorn. It introduces some very interesting concepts that are not necessarily new, but do have a potential to simplify the experience of building and running applications in Kubernetes. On the other hand, it also keeps the tradition of disappointment very much alive. I'm excited and depressed at the same time, and that probably tells you more about me than Acorn. It, and I quote, is an application platform that makes it easy to build, share, and run containerized applications. That's the exciting part, and I will keep the disappointment for later. For now, let's just dive into it. Let's say that I want an easy way to run an application created by someone else. In the ideal world, I should just get a reference to that application and say, hocus pocus, run. I might want to customize the outcome in some way, but if I don't, I should be able to run it without any additional effort. A single reference should be enough. Anything beyond that is too much. That's the logic behind Acorn. I can, for example, go to acorn.io, click the deploy button and select one of the services from the catalog. Now, there isn't much over there at the moment. The catalog itself consists of a few commonly used databases, which you'll see me use later. A more interesting option is to deploy a service from an Acorn image. All I need to do is specify a name, an image, and click the deploy button. Now, the important part is that the image I specified is not a typical container image. It's everything, and I repeat, everything I need to run that specific service. It's an Uber image with all the images and manifests and whatever else it might need. As a result, I got a container with the application itself, a job that will create a database schema, a service with PostgreSQL database, and whatever is needed to orchestrate and glue those three together. From there on, I can click a button that will open the application in a browser through an auto-generated ingress address. It's a silly demo that happens to require a database which needs a schema. Now, I can use this UI to see some additional information like CPU, memory, networking requests, logs, events, and so on and so forth. The UI itself is absolutely nothing to write home about. So I will skip the UI right after I copy the endpoint through which I can interact with my newly deployed application. Now, from a terminal, I can use CURL to interact with my app. I can prove that the database was created by sending a POST request to the application that will add some data to the database, and then I can send a GET request to retrieve that data. Everything works as expected. It was easy to deploy the application. It was easy to interact with it. All I needed was a reference to a single container image that contains everything the application needs. I believe that is great, conceptually at least. However, I'm not sure whether that's anything new. There are quite a few other solutions that do something similar. We can, for example, package a Helm chart into a container image and deploy it. That Helm chart can contain the list of dependencies that could deploy a database and apply a schema. Timoni, which I explored in that video, 
does something similar by packaging Q manifests into a container image. What makes Acorn special, or to be more precise, different. Now, that's the that's better word. Different is that it packages everything into a single container image and not only manifests. Actually, it does not package everything. Dependent services like, in this case, PostgreSQL are not packaged, but the manifests and the images we're building are. Is that an advantage compared to Helm charts or Q manifests built into container images? I'm honestly not sure. Let's say for the sake of putting Acorn under a positive light that for now, I will say that it is an interesting approach. Now, before I move forward, let me say right away that this so far looks great for people who want to showcase their applications quickly and easily. If I would like you to take a look at my application, this could be a great way to do it. If I would like to spin it up easily for some demo or training purposes, it looks like a great way to do it. That impression is reinforced by the fact that in the free version, a service exists for only two hours. That's just enough to showcase or demo an application. There is an option to self-host Acorn or to use a paid version of the SaaS solution for longer running applications, which presumably would be used in production. However, I'm not convinced that it could serve other purposes, like for example, ephemeral environments for testing or development or permanent environments like production. So let's move on. We'll try to figure that out later. But before we do move on, let me remove the Acon service I deployed earlier. Now, to be clear, we do not have to use the web UI to deploy Acorns. Everything can be done from a terminal. I can, for example, replicate running an application packaged as an Acorn image by using the CLI. The same result I accomplished with the UI can be done by executing Acorn run command and waiting for a while until all the stars align. If you get tired at looking at the terminal, you can always switch to the web UI and see the progress over there. Now, I tend to get migraines by looking at web UIs, so I will go back to the terminal and there we go, the deployment is finished. Now, since the end result is the same no matter whether we create acorns from a web UI or a terminal, I will not waste your time on it. Instead, I will delete the app I just created and jump into building acorns. I like the name Acorn. Acorn is a great name. Well done over there. We saw that we can run apps packaged as Acorn images, but that might have left you wondering how to create those images. Here's a very simple example of an Acorn file. Over there, we can see that I defined a single container app that will be built from the current context and that publishes port 8080. Now, if you use Q, you might be saying, wait a minute, is this Q? And the answer is yes, kind of. Officially, it's Acorn Markup Language, or AML, which is a sort of DSL built on top of Q. If you never use Q, I suggest you start learning it, not because of Acorn, but because it's awesome, because you will see more and more tools built on top of it, and because that's my favorite language for defining stuff, including Kubernetes manifests. You can check out those videos if you're new to Q. Now, while that is great because it's very simple, the real world scenarios tend to be more complex, no matter how much Acorn tries to simplify them. My apps likely need some backend storage, maybe a database. So here's a more elaborated version of the Acorn file. This time I'm defining a service called DB that will use the image built by the Acorn team itself. As you already saw, Acorn images contain everything from configs to container images required to run something and PostgreSQL is no exception. It cannot get any easier than that, as long as we do not need anything but very, very, very simple setups. We'll discuss the limitations behind those simplifications later. Now, besides saying that I want a database, I also added the ENV section that will inject some environment variables to my application. Values of those variables are essentially references to the DB service defined above. So with that setup, I'll get the database and my app, and the latter will have credentials to access the database injected as environment variables. Now, as you can probably guess, an application connected to a database is pointless unless it has a schema. So let's take a look 
at the final version of my Acorn file. The database and the app definitions are the same as before, and I added a new section, Jobs. Unlike containers that are supposed to run forever, jobs are supposed to run once and then exit. Or to explain it in a different way, Acorn containers create Kubernetes deployments and Acorn jobs create, well, Kubernetes jobs. Over there, I'm saying that the build should be based on Dockerfile migrations, which, by the way, uses Atlas to apply DB schemas. Atlas is currently my favorite tool for DB schema management, and if you're not familiar with Atlas, you should check them out through those videos over there. Now, just as my app needs to connect to the database, Atlas also needs to do the same, so I added the same environment variables to the job as well. Entry point, as you can guess, overwrites Docker entry point. And finally, there is the consume section that tells Acorn that it should wait for the DB to be up and running before executing that job. That Acorn file is the same one I used to build the image that I showcased at the beginning of this video. However, this time I will not run apps based on a pre-built image. Instead, I will tell Acorn to run based on the current context. If we focus on the output, we can see that this time, it's different. Instead of just applying the resources required to run the application, it started building the image, so this time it will take a while longer. Now, since I already said that I get migraines by looking at web UIs, I will not go there. Instead, I will copy the endpoint from the output and store it in an environment variable. We'll need it later. As you can expect, we can do typical operations through the CLI. We can, for example, list all the apps managed by Acorn and the jobs related to, let's say, silly demo. We can output logs and events. I could exec into the container when my application is running, but since adding shell to container images is a silly thing to do, I use Scratch as the base image, so there is no shell and I cannot exec into that container. I could also list all the volumes and so on and so forth. If you get the feeling that Acorn is like Docker Compose for Kubernetes, you're not alone. I'm not sure that's a good thing, but I'll leave that discussion for the end of this video. And now that we saw that we can build and run Acorns, let's take a look at how it can help with development. We're kind of going backwards, right? I show how to run apps based on pre-built Acorn images, then how to run apps by letting Acorn build images, and now we're going to the very beginning, to the development phase. I can let Acorn monitor my file system and apply changes to the application every time I change something. I'll do that by opening a new terminal session and by executing Acorn Dev. Now, if I go back to the first terminal session, I can interact with the application by sending it a request and the output is the same as before. I got the silly message. There's nothing new here since I did not change the code of my application. So, let me simulate development by changing the output message to this is Acorn demo. Now, I would expect Acorn to detect that I made the change to my source code and do something about it, right? That's what I expected. That's probably what you expect. That's a reasonable request. So let's go to the second terminal session where I'm running Acorn in the dev mode and see... That's disappointing. I'm disappointed. Acorn ignores me. It does not care about my changes. It does not care about me. And I don't like those who don't care about me. Acorn, you hurt my feelings. Now it seems, and I might be wrong, that Acorn reacts only to changes of the Acorn file and Docker file. We can see that by changing the Acorn file and there we go. Acorn woke up and it is doing whatever it needs to do to reflect the changes I made to my app. I can confirm that by sending yet another request to my app and this time the output is different. It reflects the changes I made to the code. Development mode that reacts only to changes of the Acorn file and Docker file is not very useful and I can think of only two explanations. One, I'm doing something wrong. If that's the case, I will blame the docs not myself. The section about the development mode does not mention a way how I could instruct Acorn to react to changes of my source code. The alternative explanation is that at this moment, that's all there is to it. If that's the case, all I can say is that I'm disappointed, very disappointed, but that I do understand that it is still in beta, so my disappointment might uh, evaporate by time it reaches GA. That's possible. Now, even though I'm disappointed with the development mode, there is one really, really nice feature that I would like to show you. Let me go back to the second terminal and stop the dev mode by pressing Ctrl-C 
and send another request to my app. <laughs> Look at that! It immediately reverted back to the original version, the one unpolluted with my changes, and that's awesome. Now, everything we saw so far relies on running Acorns in their SaaS solution, and you might be wondering whether you can run it all that by yourself. We can also run Acorn in Kubernetes. No, wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. That's wrong, since everything I showed you so far was running in Kubernetes, but that was in Acorn SaaS offering that is behind the hood running in their Kubernetes clusters. What I wanted to say is that we can run Acorns in our own Kubernetes clusters. We can opt for a self-managed version of Acorn, and all we need to do is execute the Acorn install command and wait for a while. I hate waiting, but that's what it is. Now, in my case, it will take longer than normal to install Acorn since it expects Kubernetes cluster with ingress, and I'm using a kind cluster without one, so it will be stuck for a while until it times out. That's okay, since I'm not planning to show you the ingress part anyways, so we can fast forward to the end of the installation process. Acorn is now up and running, and from now on, there is no tangible difference between running Acorns in their SaaS solution and in our own Kubernetes clusters, except for one additional flag. So, Acorn run and dash dash cube config that points to the Kubernetes cluster where we want to run Acorns. It will take a while to do whatever it's doing, so let's fast forward to the end of this one as well. Now, if I list all the pods we have in the cluster, we can see what Acorn is doing behind the scenes. We can see that it created two namespaces prefixed with the name of the app, which is silly demo. One contains the app and the schema job, while the other hosts the database defined as a linked service. Let's see what's inside one of those namespaces. It's the standard Kubernetes stuff. It created a deployment, which created a replica set, which created pods. It created uh, services for both the app and the job. There is the job itself and then ingress. This is disappointingly the same as what countless other tools are doing. It reminds me of the tools that use Docker Compose to create Kubernetes resources. Those were limited to what Docker Compose can do, and Acorn seems to be as limited as Docker Compose, yet it chose to come up with its own DSL instead of using Docker Compose files. That's kind of strange. Why go into all that trouble of creating a DSL when the end result is almost the same as what you had, what we had with Docker Compose? Why use Q for very, very simple scenarios. Why would we ignore most of the Kubernetes features and pretend that it is Docker? Is scheduling the only advantage over running Docker Compose? Maybe. All in all, I'm disappointed with Acorn running in my own Kubernetes cluster. I see no benefits. I see only limitations here. That does not mean that I'm disappointed with Acorn SaaS offering. I can see a few benefits to it. So let's talk about pros and cons. Let me start by saying that Acorn is still in beta, so I will not judge it for the issues, but rather for the ideas and the direction. I like the idea of packaging everything an application needs into a single container image. In this context, by everything I mean all the images and the manifest and everything else. Now, when I say that I like it, I don't necessarily mean that I'm thrilled. We already have the ability to package Helm charts or almost any other types of manifests as container images. Timoni, for example, does that with Q manifests. Now, those solutions package only manifests, which in turn reference container images stored separately. Acorn adds images to the Acorn container image as well. Is it interesting? Yes. Is it a game changer? Not really. The end result is more or less the same. Then we have a new format for specifying resources. It's called Acorn Markup Language, or AML, and it's a DSL, and it's based on Q, and I'm not sure why we need it. It's meant to simplify the experience of creating manifests, so we are very unlikely going to end up with complex stuff defined as Acorn files. For most users, Acorn files are going to be simple manifests, and that makes me wonder why not just use YAML. Now, to be clear, I prefer Q, but that's because I'm used to it and because things I define in it would take thousands of lines of YAML. When I deal with simple manifests, I prefer YAML, and I bet most of the others do as well. Those who don't are likely going to say that they prefer defining simple stuff in whichever language they already know. That could be JSON or TOML or Java or JavaScript or Python or... You get the point, right? Not Q. 
So personally, I'm all in on Q and hence on Acorn file format as well, but I don't think it is a good choice. That being said, Acorn does come with CRDs that can be used to create CRs that are functionally the same as Acorn files. So you don't have to use AML except that CRs are either not documented or hidden. So I can only assume that the Acorn does not want us to use them directly. And that's a pity. I feel that that's a missed opportunity. If Acorn exposed itself as a documented CRD, it would enable people to define Acorn files in YAML or any language that could output YAML. That would be a great way to onboard users who are not familiar with Q. It would also enable collaboration with CNCF tools like, for example, Argo CD, Flux, and countless of others. In any case, CRDs are not documented or are hidden, so I will ignore them. Further on, Acorn tries to simplify building and running apps in Kubernetes, and that's great, but it's not unique either. There are dozens of tools that do something similar, starting with, we are going to transform your Docker Compose files into Kubernetes manifests on one end of the spectrum, to we are going to provide an easy way to perform complex operations on the other. I prefer that other part of the spectrum. That would be tools like Knative or Open Function. Those do not make easy things easier. They make complex things easy. I feel that Acorn is on the we make easy things easier side of the spectrum. It does not provide advanced networking or auto scaling to zero replicas or anything else that would make it stand out. Open function, for example, is just as easy to define as Acorn, but it also provides advanced features without sacrificing simplicity. It builds images and runs apps in Kubernetes, but it has capabilities that make it more suitable for production or preview environments than Acorn. By the way, if you're not familiar with Open Function, you should watch that video. So maybe Acorn is aiming at users that do not have simple scenarios and that do not need anything beyond what Docker offers, but they need it running in Kubernetes. Or maybe that's not the case and the target audience are those that want a SaaS solution for running apps. In that case, Acorn is competing with Azure Container Apps and Google Cloud Run and Fly.io and Vercel and many others, and I still don't see what would make someone choose Acorn over any of those. Then there is the ability to use Acorn to develop applications with hot reloading, rebuilding, and redeployment, but that's not amazing either. Even if Acorn fixes the issue with not reacting to changes of the source code, as I'm sure that they will, it's still not unique. We have plenty of tools that do that, and I explored at least half a dozen of them in this channel. What might make Acorn unique is a combination of all those features aiming towards users who do not want to combine tools themselves. The target users could be small shops without ops teams that prefer a SaaS solution that has everything they need and what they need is not much. No advanced features and no complications. Simple apps, simple scenarios, and a simple solution. That could be Acorn's target audience. I feel that I already went through most of the pros and cons without really wanting to do so. So let me summarize them. Starting with cons, Q-based DSL would normally be a good thing. I love Q, but I'm not sure that Q is the way to go for users who want something simple and probably something familiar. I feel that the Acorn could have used Docker Compose files instead. While I'm not fond of Compose itself, since it cannot be used for anything but simple scenarios, Acorn's target audience is probably used to it, and I'm not sure they'd like to switch from YAML to Q. Next, it does not offer any of the features that are considered table stakes today. For example, there is no auto scaling, and I feel that the target audience would benefit greatly from the ability to scale their apps to zero replicas when they're not used and have a result similar to what we today call serverless. That would be a better model than this app will run for two hours and then it will be destroyed. Feature-wise, Acorn is like Docker Compose in Kubernetes, but sufficiently different to scare users who are used to Docker Compose. Finally, Acorn does not excel at anything. There's nothing in it that I haven't seen before, and there are plenty of tools that do what Acorn does but better. I said at the beginning of this section that the project is in the beta stage, so I skipped listing all the features that might be fixed by the time it reaches GA. If Acorn would be GA, the list of cons would be much longer.
Now, let's take a look at the pros. To begin with, Acorn is a simple way to build and run applications. Now, I'm not saying that there are no tools that offer the same simplicity because there's plenty. Still, there is no denying that Acorn is simple and that's a good thing as long as you don't expect it to do anything special. All images and configs in a single container image is an interesting concept that deserves to be listed as a positive idea. I'm still on the fence of whether it's a good idea or not, but it's definitely interesting, so I'm listing it as a pro. And now comes the most important pro, and that's the fact that Acorn, when used as a SaaS solution, is probably the best way to provide an easy way to showcase applications for demos and trainings and sales and similar scenarios. I might not be convinced that it's a good solution for production, but I am convinced that it's a great solution for showcasing applications to customers or for trainings. I love the, here's the image, click the button and you have the app running type of experience. All in all, I'm still confused about Acorn's target audience. So let me give it a shot at trying to define who it is for and who should avoid it. For orgs who prefer self-managed solutions and that have a strong ops team Knative or Open Function is a better choice. Or if those teams want to go even further and generate their own opinions about how to run apps in Kubernetes, they might opt for Kubevela or Crossplane or even create their own CRDs and controllers by writing Go code and implementing the operator pattern, for example. For orgs who prefer self-managed solutions without a strong ops team, Kubernetes is not a good solution no matter what they put on top of it. So neither Acorn, nor Open Function, nor anything else is a good choice. Don't use Kubernetes if you want to self-manage stuff and you don't know what you're doing. So if you don't have a strong ops team. Kubernetes is not easy if all engineers are application developers and there is no one to manage the cluster. In those cases, I would choose VMs with Docker and use Docker Compose or something similar. For organizations that prefer SaaS solutions and do have the ops team, Azure Container Apps, Google Cloud Run, and other similar services from big providers are the way to go. Then there are those who want SaaS but are without the ops team. Those would benefit from services like Fly.io or Vercel or something similar. That's where Acorn might fit in. It might be competing with those services. Eventually, I think it is for none of those, or to be more precise, Acorn might not be a choice for those that want to run applications in production, period. It might not be the choice for developers nor ops, but for trainers and sales and marketing and other professionals who are not interested in anything but a simple way to run an app for a short period of time during which that app can be showcased. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.